Hello folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stream your videos using AWS CloudFront. Now, I have a map of the world here, and you can see a load of little dots and whatnot. Uh, this is just a picture that I grabbed from the web, you know. And on the left, you'll see it says edge locations and multiple edge locations and all of that. Now, by the way, there are going to be a few new phrases and whatnot here because Amazon, or at least AWS, are really good at coming up with alternative names for things that are kind of normal. So an edge location is just a data warehouse. It's just a place where a bunch of servers are, okay? And the vibe goes something like this. Let's imagine you have a website and you're doing a course on how to teach your parrot how to sing or something, I don't know. And let's imagine that suddenly you get a spike in traffic and there are people all over the planet, maybe, I don't know, 10,000 people, all trying to view the video at the same time. Well, what happens on AWS is you, as the webmaster, have the ability to create what's called a cloud front distribution. A cloud front distribution is just a bunch of data warehouses that have now got access to your S3 bucket. And those data centers are all ready to start feeding that out just in case you end up with high amounts of traffic. And that all happens in the background and it's all automatic. It's actually really, really amazing. And for some reason, this is just a subject that just interests me. Anyway, in case you're wondering, this is what the inside of an AWS data center looks like. This is not the set from Star Trek. This really is what it looks like. It's just rows and rows and rows of servers. And if you want to know what they look like from the outside, here's your answer. Now notice that we really are talking about just a big grey faceless warehouse. They literally are just big warehouses. You'll never see a sign outside that says welcome to Amazon or anything. You'll notice that there are no tours that you can go on. You can't show up and go to the gift shop and all of this. And there's a really good reason for that. You see, one of my clients in the past was BT, very large telecommunications company based here in the UK. And I can tell you that data centers are considered to be potentially sensitive military targets. When you look at the Gulf War or something like that, any modern warfare scenario, and there are, sadly, there are plenty of them that have been happening lately. Well, it's always the data centers, the telecommunication centers, the places where they handle internet stuff and phone calls. That is top of the target list. That was my phone vibrating, I apologize. Yeah, that stuff's always top of the target list. This is just like Modern Warfare 101. The thinking is that if you can take out a data center, you can take out an entire country. So who would have thought you came here for loop back and I actually taught you how to conquer the planet Earth. Anyway, <laughs> let's get on with this tutorial. I apologize for the long intro. So, I would like you to log on to your AWS console and do a search for CloudFront. Uh, you can either search here or else you'll find it at the migration thing here. I've been using it quite a bit lately, so for me it's right here. So we're looking for CloudFront, okay? And I'm going to show you how to create a CloudFront distribution. You know what that is now, right? Bunch of servers serving out the stuff from your S3 bucket, right? So we click on Create Distribution. We've got a couple of options here. I want you to click on the one that says Web. Okay. And then it's going to give you a very scary looking form here. But don't worry. I'm going to guide you through it and everything will be fine. Where it says Origin Domain Name. If you click on that, you'll see that it brings up a list of your buckets. Just choose the bucket that you would like to use. For this demo, I'm going to be using the MyDemy bucket. So here it's on the list, and there you go. Now, origin path refers to any subdomains 
within that bucket. We don't have any, so let's just leave that, okay? We can leave this origin ID where it says restrict bucket access. I want you to say yes. And where we have origin access identity, I want you to say create a new identity. Where we have grant read permissions on bucket, I would like you to say yes, update bucket policy. Then we're going to leave the origin custom headers. We're going to leave this as well that says viewer protocol, but do bear in mind that everybody is moving to HTTPS and if you do that, then it might be worth selecting HTTPS only in the future. But for the moment, we'll just leave that, okay? Allowed HTTP methods, just keep it on get and head. That'll be fine for us. We can leave this, we can leave this, and we can leave this. We can leave all of this stuff as well. We can leave this, we can leave this, leave this. Now, where it says restrict viewer access, we want to say yes. Okay, moving along, we've got uh, something else. We can leave that. Compress objects automatically, we'll leave that as well. And uh, right, this one here, where we've got distribution settings price class for testing purposes, and we're just testing this, right? If you're just beginning and all of that. Um, I would highly recommend just choose only the US, Canada and Europe. This will keep costs down, at least when you're testing. Obviously, if that's the only geographic region you're serving, then you just select that as well, okay? Now, the rest of it, we can leave that, leave that, leave that, leave that. We can leave that, leave that, leave that, leave that. Yep, that's it. That is it. We can leave everything else, okay? So, then we just click Create Distribution. Now, this is awful because watch this. Right, we're all expecting a page that says thank you or something, right? Or your distribution has been created or whatever. It takes you here. Now, AWS, they change the design all the time. So, maybe you have a different page. But for the moment, it takes you here. And you're thinking, has this even worked? Has anything happened? Well, it has. It's just that it's really bad design. So if you go into AWS again and then click on to cloud front again. So we're going back in the front door again here, right? You'll notice that there's a record where you said create distribution. And over near the right hand side, you'll see a little thing that says in progress and it's spinning around. Okay. So what's happening here is AWS is now grabbing your file from the bucket and it's setting up a CloudFront distribution. In other words, it's setting up a relationship between your bucket and all of those different data centers. Now that's going to be doing that for about 10-15 minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so some time has passed and as you can see, the little spinner has disappeared. It says status deployed, state enabled, we are looking good. Now, if you click into this by clicking on the ID here, that was the ID I clicked on, this computer thing and you cannot see the pointer, which is a shame. But you'll see some basic information about our CloudFront distribution. The most important part of this page is this thing here that says domain name. So what has happened is, if we had our video just hosted on Amazon S3, then when we are adding a video player to a website, we would say that the video source says blah, 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 S3, blah, 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 forward slash MP4. The point is the address would be an S3 address for the video, right? That's where the video source would be. However, in the case of CloudFront, we do not make S3 the source. We are given a special CloudFront address, and that's what you're looking at here. Now, it may not look like an address, but once you add HTTP, blah, 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 that's going to be a perfectly legit web address. And the vibe is, we're going to add that address onto our video players, and that means that when we play our video, we will be doing so via the CloudFront. 
Remember, what is a cloud front? Just a bunch of servers. That's all, okay? So, that's all coming up in the next video. Stay cool. I'll see you soon.